Hello guys, welcome back. It's pretty hot in Australia at this moment. It's more than 40 degrees right now, but fortunately I'm sitting here in front of a computer in a air conditioned room, just recording this video for you. So in this hot season, what I am going to bring to you, it's the front door service, which Microsoft just announced a couple of months ago. So what exactly is front door service? Well, if you have ever used Azure's application gateway or traffic manager, it's kind of like a combination of application gateway and traffic manager. So we know that application gateway is a not balancer works on the application layer. So front door is the same. It works at the application layer, but it different from the application gateway because application gateway is just only regional available. What does that mean? That means that you have to deploy the application gateway to a specific region. If that region fails, then your application gateway will fail as well. From that point of view, the front door service is similar to the traffic manager. It is global available. It doesn't bound to any specific region. And with front door service, you can ensure that um, your client request will be routed to the fastest and most available application backend. What exactly is an application backend? An application backend is any internet facing service hosted inside or outside of Azure. So that includes a web service running on an Azure virtual machine or an app service on Azure or even a web service running on Google Cloud or Elevated EC2 instance or even a server running in your on-premise data center. Okay, enough talking, let's get our hands dirty. So to create a front door service, we need to go to the Azure portal. I've already logged in here. Then we go to our services just to find out the front door service. Basically, you type in the front door service in the search box, then it will just pop out here. So we select the front door here and then it brings us to this front door service management portal. Then we can just create the front door service from here. Now, the first thing we need to do is just to provide this front door service a subscription and a resource group. So this resource group, I've already created one, which is rg-fd. This resource group actually is located in Australia East, but this is just only for the front door services metadata. So it does not mean this front door service is only available in Australia East. So as we said before, the front door service is global available. You don't need to choose a location for a front door service. So the next thing is to configure the front door service. To configure the front door service is pretty simple and easy, just three major steps. Just like uh, the Azure Load Balancer or Azure Application Gateway, you need a front end host and then a back end pool. And finally, a routing rule just to glue the front end host and the back end pool together. So let's get started by adding a front end host. To add a front end host, you, you need to choose a host name under the Azure FD.NET domain. This host name needs to be global unique under the Azure FD.NET domain. So for example, if we go a cloudmaster.fd, hopefully no one is using this. Now here you can choose the session affinity. Basically, it means that um, it will use the session cookie just to keep a certain user to a certain backend as long as the backend is healthy. So you can choose to enable it or disable it here. Front door also supports web application firewall. Basically, it's the same as the application gateway. If you want to enable the application firewall, you, you can enable it here. And you just need to choose a policy, which by the way, you cannot create the policy here. You need to go to the WAF policies and create the WAF policy and then you can choose the policy from here. Okay, let's just add this front end host. Uh, sorry, we need to disable the application firewall first, otherwise we will need to provide it a policy. Okay, so we add this front end host. Now the second step is to create a backend pool. So we will need to give it a name. So for example, we call it be one and then we will need to add one to backend to this backend pool. So again, as we said before, a backend can be any internet facing web service. It can be a web service running on Azure virtual machines, or can be an app service running on Azure, or even a web service running 
in your on-premise data center. So here I have three virtual machines created on Azure, one located in East Asia and two located in France Central. So here we can add those three virtual machines as backends into this backend pool. Let's just add a backend here. Here, the backend host type can be an app service, a cloud service, an Azure storage, or a custom host. Here, the Azure virtual machines, we can add them as custom host. And then here, we will need to provide the backend host name. It can be either an IP address or the full qualified domain name. Here is different from the traffic manager when we were trying to add an Azure virtual machine to a traffic manager as an endpoint. This Azure virtual machine not only needs to have a public IP address, but the public IP address also needs to have a DNS label. Otherwise, the traffic manager will not allow you to add it, right? Because the traffic manager is a DNS based node manager. Here for the front door service, we can either add an Azure virtual machine using its IP address or use its DNS name because it doesn't use DNS to node balance. So here, because all of my three virtual machines have the DNS label configured, we can add them using the DNS label. So we will find out the DNS label and add them as backends. So now this backend pool has three backends configured. By default, all the backends have the same priority, which is one, and the same weight, which is 50. And here for the backend pool, we can also configure the health props and the load balancings. We can configure the health prop either use HTTP or HTTPS protocol and the intervals, which means how often you want to test the backend's health. And here there are three parameters we will need to configure for the load balancing. The first one is the sample size and the second one is successful samples required. And the last one is the latency sensitivity. What do all these three parameters mean? So for example, here we have the sample size configured to four and successful sample requires configured to two. This means that we will need to wait for at least four health probes. And for the last four health prop samples, we will need to have at least two successful samples to declare a given backend as a healthy backend. Otherwise, the backend will be treated as unhealthy. Now, with the backends configured, we can add this backend pool. Finally, the last step is the routing rule. We can create a routing rule to glue the front end host and the back end host together. Also, we will need a name. We can call it a rule 01. So here it can accept HTTP only or HTTPS only or HTTP and HTTPS. So you have to choose the front door host. Right now we have only one front door host name. But if you, let's say if we also had a custom domain here, you can choose it from here. And we will need to choose a backend pool for this rule, which we only have one here. So we'll just choose that so backend pool B01. The forwarding protocol, this is the protocol between the front door service and the backend. Because all my three virtual machines don't have HTTPS configured, so we will need to use HTTP only here. And also you can choose whether to enable the caching or not. If you enable the caching here, this front door service will try to cache any cacheable pages from your backend, such as your static web pages. Okay, let's click the add button to add this routing rule. Now we have the front end host, the backend pool and the routing rule created. Then here we can go and create this front door. Here also you have a chance to create any tags for this front door service if you like. We don't have any tags for this front door service for now, so we can just go review and create this front door service. The validation pass, that's good, so we can create this front door service. Okay, so the front door service has been created. Let's go to the resource and check it out. So basically this overview gives you a general idea of what this front door service looks like. If we want to change the front door configuration, we can go to the front door designer here. 
which brings us to the three steps again. From here, you can add an extra custom domain to your front door service. So first of all, you need to prove that you own that custom domain. So for example, if we put in www.acloudmaster.com, it will then show us we need to create a CNAME record with my DNS provider to point to my Azure front door hostname. So if you have any custom domain, you can do that from here. Now we will just cancel it. So you can also add extra backend pools here or change the backend pool configuration here. Pretty much the same as we saw in the wizard. Okay, now let's go and test from the clients. Now here I have three clients, one from Australia, one from East US, and one from France Central. So let's test from the France Central one first. We can use curl to access the front door service UIO, which we can copy it from here and then go to this client and that brings us to the front central vm02 so that's fair enough because this front central vm02 has the noise the latency to this client how about the east us one so yeah that makes sense because from the latency point of view the east us should have a lower latency to france than to the east asia endpoint right so finally let's test it out from the australia client so this Australia East client has been routed to the East Asia backend, which makes sense because it has the noise and latency to this client. Okay, so what will happen if one of the backends fails? So for example, if we go and bring down the East Asia's um, Nginx service, shut it down, and that has been stopped. Will that affect the front central client? No, it doesn't. How about the East US one? It doesn't affect that as well, but it will affect the Australian clients because this client was accessing the East Asia backend. Now this time, the front door service tells the Australian client that service is unavailable. That's because it needs some time just to detect the backend's health. So hopefully it will just recover in a couple of seconds. So okay, so after about half a minute or so, the web page has been fell over to the next available one, which is the France Central VM02. And that concludes this demo. And thanks for your watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have anything else you want to know, please comment underneath this video. Otherwise, stay tuned. We will have more videos coming.